Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How Databricks and Click Use Real-Time Signals to Improve Customer Satisfaction, brought to you by Technology and Services Industry Association and sponsored by SupportLogic. My name is Vanessa Lucero, and I'll be your moderator for today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's webinar will be recorded. A link to the recording of today's presentation will be sent to you within 24 hours via email. Audio will be delivered via streaming. All attendees will be in a listen-only mode, and your webinar controls, including volume, are found in the toolbar at the bottom of the webinar player. We encourage your comments and questions. If you think of a question for the presenters at any point, please submit through the Ask a Question box on the top left corner of the webinar player, and we will open it up for a verbal Q&A portion at the end of today's session. Lastly, feel free to enlarge the slides to full screen at any time by selecting one of the full screen button options, which are located on the top right corner of the slide player. I would now like to introduce our presenters today. John Ragsdale, Distinguished Vice President of Technology Research for TSIA. Tanver Kerheva, Senior Director of Technical Solutions for Databricks. Daniel Kule, Vice President of Support Services for Click. And Krishna Raj Raja, Founder and CEO of SupportLogic. As with all of our TSIA webinars, we do have a lot of exciting content to cover in the next 45 minutes, so let's jump right in and get started. John, over to you. Well, thank you, Vanessa. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, we're going to answer one of the most common questions I get, which is, you're always hyping AI, but what are people actually doing with it? Uh, so we're going to uh, hear from a couple of companies that are doing some really interesting things with AI, uh, natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and these are use cases around a topic that we uh, all uh, really understand and care about, which is customer satisfaction and customer experience. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion today, so a, another uh, feedback we get a lot is we would rather hear more discussion and less presentation. Uh, so we're going to mainly be uh, talking and answering questions today uh, with, our, with our panelists. So I think you picked a really good day uh, to join us. Uh, some great content, really interesting. I know that uh, everybody is heads down uh, planning for next year, and I think this is going to really help you understand uh, how some investment in technology could dr dramatically improve uh, the customer experience. So uh, I wanted to open with just a couple of data points. Uh, we just finished uh, the 2020 uh, technology surveys. Uh, we sent the results out a couple of weeks ago. So all of you who took the survey, thank you very much. You should have received those results. And a couple of interesting points. Uh, one of the technologies we track is customer experience analytics. And 81% of companies say that they have technology for customer experience analytics. But when we look at what tools they're actually using, more than a third of them, 38%, are only using basic survey tools. And you know, survey tools are great, but they're not really helping you identify the challenges with customers, the issues with customers. You're not being proactive uh, about understanding what's going on with your customers. So for the 38% of you just using survey tools, uh, today we're going to talk about some really interesting technology that can take uh, your survey results, your survey verbatims, and a lot of other data just sitting in your CRM system uh, and really help you better understand uh, where your customers are. If we look at the plan spending, 76% uh, of companies say that they have budget for customer experience technology in the next one to two years and 80% of support services organizations. Uh, so I know that there's a lot of plan spending out there, uh, and I think it's really helpful to look at some of the pace setter practices and really sophisticated technology that is uh, now available. 
So before we get uh, started with our panel, I wanted to kind of get a level set of where the audience is with this topic. So uh, I'm pushing out our polling question, which says, do you have plans to evolve your voice of the customer program beyond surveys in the next 12 months? The first option is we currently use real-time sentiment analysis using artificial intelligence and natural language processing. So if you're already doing this, that's the option for you. The next option is we plan to add real-time sentiment analysis using AI and NLP in the next 12 months. Uh, we have plans to add this in uh, beyond 12 months out, so you're looking at probably 2022. And the final option, we have no plans uh, to add any more sophisticated capabilities. We're happy just surveying our customers. So I see that uh, the results are coming in. Um, not exactly what I expected, but always interesting to see you know, where our audience is. So uh, last chance to vote, and now I'm gonna push the results out to uh, everyone and pretty evenly split over these choices. The largest percentage, 28%, um, are sticking with surveys. Uh, you can see that a quarter of the audience is already leveraging some of this technology we're gonna be talking about today and half the audience is planning to invest uh, this year or the, the following year. So uh, that's really helpful for all of our panelists. We've got some experts, we've got some folks that are new to this concept. Uh, so we'll make sure we break down our, our answers and make sure it's clear to everyone. So I wanna get started with our panel discussion. And first I'm gonna ask each panelist just to introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about their company uh, and their role. And uh, we're gonna get started with Tanver Karada, who is the Senior Director of Technology Solutions for Databricks. Tanver, welcome to the webinar. Thanks a lot, John. So I'll kick it off by introducing myself, uh, Tanvir Karada. I've been with Databricks a little bit over two years now. Prior to that, I was with Hortonworks, also managing the support teams over there. And I, I run the Americas and Europe support centers uh, today. Uh, fr from support perspective, support leadership perspective. Switching into what we do at Databricks. So Databricks is, is a cloud-based uh, industry-leading unified data analytics platform created from the creators of Spark. So if, if, you have, if you have heard of Spark, essentially Databricks created Spark and we have you plug Spark into our cloud-based platform to solve uh, the toughest uh, data analysis problems. Uh, essentially, the mission here is to help data scientists be successful with the data they have to gain insights uh, and, and solve some of the difficult problems they have been dealing with. Switching into support, uh, how we operate, what are, what are the key deliverables and drivers that we look for, we want to continue to improve CSAT, essentially deliver world-class support to our customers, meet their expectations, beat their expectations, with the responsiveness and the quality of the responses to, 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 to deliver highly satisfactory experiences. In, in addition to that, we want to prevent escalation. As, as we work at scale, there are a lot of nuances that come into play uh, with, with staying on top of the tickets that, that potentially creates some drop ball situations and escalations. We want to prevent them as much as possible. And as we work at scale, we want to have deeper insights, more meaningful insights, uh, flexible reporting on how the t team is behaving, how healthy the team is, is there a need to shift workloads, and, and, and some of the other operational nuances that will make the team be successful on a day-to-day -day perspective. And overall, improving efficiency, how, how we can improve our efficiency on a day-to-day -day perspective to utilize our, our team's bandwidth as effectively as possible, utilize the product as effectively as possible uh, to, to, to provide, to, to provide world-class support. And in addition to those deliverables, how we are laid out here at Databricks. So we have, from, from, from uh, operations perspective, we have five different support centers globally, and we offer 24 by seven by 365 operations. Uh, support to our customers. We have uh, we, we have around 5,000 plus customers today filing tickets with us, and we are hitting a, we are hitting a mark where we get 14,000 plus tickets per day. So we we are scaling very heavily and and operating at at a highly 
highly scaled, uh, high volume level uh, today at, at Databricks from day to day ticket perspective. And to operate that, to manage that workload, how is our tech stack la laid out? So for ticketing, we use CRM. For collaboration and documentation, we use Google Workspace and Slack very heavily. Uh, for engineering assistance, we use Jira, since Z Jira is what engineering uses for their, their uh, project tracking. And, and, and in addition to that, for intelligence uh, and proactive signals and alerts, we have, we have been using support logic to get ahead of escalations and efficiency improvement. So that, that summarizes what I have, John. Back over to you. Okay, thanks, Denver. It's great to get a better understanding of what Databricks does, but also that tech stack. I think that also really helps people uh, understand, you know, where where you're you're working here. Um, our next panelist is a longtime TSI member, and he's a glutton for punishment. He's been on a webinar with us before and was brave enough uh, to come back for another one. So, welcome to the webinar. Daniel Coulet is the Vice President of Support Services for Click. Thank you, John. So, yeah, a little bit about, so, you know, Click First. Uh, Click is, uh, let's say, data companies. And what we, we, we sell is basically a language and how you interact with uh, people and you make decisions and you get insights with data. So that's what Click uh, does. Uh, we can manage data, we can give insights, and we help you make decisions. So that, that's what we do. We do it in uh, Many countries, direct and indirect, and we have about 50,000 customers and more than 2,000 employees. So, you know, looking at, uh, you know, who I am first, I've been in this industry of customer success for about uh, 25 years in different capacity support, customer experience, uh, cloud, uh, as well as uh, customer success operation. And for about uh, 15 months, uh, I'm leading the support organization at, at Click. Uh, as you can see, we have about the uh, same number as data break five, uh, you know, center and, and, and about 150 people. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, where we want to go and, and basically, uh, you know, why we, we choose to partner with, uh, with SuperLogic is our journey has been really about uh, getting control of our escalation and actually mitigate them by becoming more proactive. Uh, actually, uh, SuperLogic is giving us a tool with his uh, sentiment analysis and attention score, a tool to be actually more proactive and be able to uh, be more proactive in terms of addressing potential escalations coming. But in fact, that tool and, and our you know, mission uh, have also been uh, evolving since I, I joined because the tool is able now to give us information end-to-end -end between the landing of a customer into click and uh, you know up to the renewal we get this sentiment uh, and attention score that you know allow us to detect when the customers are actually in danger for for not renewing right so that transition for us has been critical this partnership with support logic uh, has been as well now you know in terms of tech stacks no nothing uh, let's say um, uh, uh, not aligned with best practices, Salesforce is there, Cisco and Jira. I think our partnership with uh, Coros is, uh, is, um, is critical because a lot of, uh, in order for us to own this end-to-end -end journey with customers, our strategy has been to go one to many and offer more and more digital content uh, to our customers. And uh, it's done mainly through our Coros platform and, and the link between Coros uh, and the success of a digital uh, touch point with customers and support logic has been one of the reasons uh, of a, you know, the success, I would say, of this organization in just 15 months. Fantastic. Well, let's, yeah. let's hear from our third panelist, someone that I've had the pleasure of uh, working with on previous webinars and also one of our keynote uh, panels at our, one of our in-person conferences when we could do in-person conferences. Krishna Raj Raja is the founder and CEO of Support Logic. Krishna, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks for that kind introduction. Um, let me give a very brief introduction into uh, Support Logic. And as I'm, I was on the screen, I'm the founder and the CEO of the Support Logic. 
the company support logic was founded on the core principle that um, support organizations and the role of support is drastically changing in the last uh, several years as we've gone into a subscription-based economy uh, where customer experience and churn go hand in hand. So the core principle of support logic as a company is how do we transform the day-to-day -day interaction that a support engineer has with your customers? How do you take those signals and transform your entire business? Uh, transform how you develop product? How do you prioritize your bugs? How do you uh, deliver customer experience? And how do you handle churn? All of this knowledge is hidden in support conversations, but it's in unstructured data. So the core philosophy behind support logic is let's tap the signals from this unstructured data. We are collecting more and more unstructured data uh, now more than ever. Uh, and this is the first time in the industry we have technology to process unstructured data at scale uh, in a very efficient way. And so that's what we are focused on. As you could see on the screen, um, a, even a simple ticket contains numerous signals, and our technology extracts the signals, construct workflows from the signals, and we are solving some uh, critical business applications for our customers using our technology. So that's a brief introduction about support logic and what we build as a company. Thanks, Krishna. You know, I talk to members all the time that are trying to do that sort of analysis manually by reading through and scoring case notes. And, you know, it, it's just so painful and, and obviously not a scalable solution to this problem. So moving into our panel discussion, um, we're going to hit on a number of hot topics today, real world examples of AI, customer experience, identifying friction points with customers. Um, but unfortunately, I find that most companies are much more reactive than proactive in analyzing customer sentiment. So my first question to the panelists is, why do you think it's important to be more proactive in understanding real-time sentiment with customers? And Krishna, let's start with you. Could you give us an overview of proactive support and how support logic enables this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the fundamental thing that uh, any support organization goes through is when you're really small, you start with um, email-based support, right? When you just have one or two support engineers. And then you graduate into a, a ticketing system after that. But the challenge that you run into it is once you have a ticketing system, um, the, for many customers, a journey ends there. And ticketing systems are great for capturing customer information uh, but they're not really designed for proactive support. They're not really designed for real-time support. Uh, it's a system of record where you store information and then uh, you capture all the information so you can go back and refer to your past interaction. But it doesn't really allow uh, tighter collaboration between support and uh, engineering or support and product and support and customer success, so on and so forth. So. The reason why real-time is so essential is uh, today we are living in um, instant um, experience for every customer wants instant gratification and instant uh, good experience. We are living in a world where software development has gone uh, agile, which means you're, you're, you're shipping features almost on a weekly basis now, what used to be on a yearly basis. Uh, so a lot of decisions has to be made in real time. Either it's a product decision or customer deciding to churn is also, a, now it's a monthly decision. So that agility is extremely important. So if you, traditional way of looking at any of these metrics is let's run this report, um, do some analytics and present it in a QBR um, and, and then you share it with the rest of the team. It's very reactive because if you spend a quarter uh, to share the results and then another quarter to make a decision, on what to do, uh, you're losing your customers. And so I think today more than ever, uh, real-time analysis is, is becoming very crucial for not only for preserving customer experience, but also preserving customers themselves. Okay, I'm having a little trouble forwarding slides. Um, so hopefully you're, you're seeing that from, yeah, okay, you're seeing that now. Uh, so, Daniel, uh, I'm, 
from you know voice from the field why do you think it's uh becoming more uh why is becoming proactive more important today and for today's customers yeah uh, it's a good question john i, I think i have different answer i mean uh, on, on one end i mean the support organization has been built on reactive it has been built on the customer force score it has been built on csat they are all lagging indicator i mean so the transformation now especially with uh, with a tool like Superlogic is actually giving you real-time information about uh, you know where, where you stand with your customers and instead of waiting for a problem to come now you know you you know at any point of time of our journey what, what is really going on with them so now you have an information when they you know, just new customers and their onboarding phase, you know what's going on when they are in, a, in, a, in your adoption phase. And by the way, you know their sentiments, uh, you know, maybe before uh, three months before renewal, right? So to me, it completely changed the game uh, to move from uh, reactive to proactive. I will also say that, uh, you know, for all customers, the journey starts more or less in Google, right? And it goes somewhere, maybe in your community, and then it goes to support. I think, uh, again, the idea of being more proactive is actually trying to get closer to the touch point with your, you know, digital touch point with your customers. So the idea is that if you are looking after your customers who are, engaging with you in, uh, in, uh, in, in, with your digital content and you find a way to help them having a successful touch point, you're also getting more and more uh, you know, proactive and actually delivering a, a delightful uh, customer experience with them. So, you know, I, I think the proactive has, has really two effects. One is this end-to-end -end customer experience and be able uh, to act on this end-to-end uh, uh, -end journey. And number two, if you get closer to your customers uh, when they need you, especially when you're, you're, they engage with you at a digital level, there is a lot of value that you can get there. Yeah, I agree. I also think this year in particular, we're all under a lot of pressure to be more um, em empathetic with our customers and more understanding with our customers. and you know, if you're totally reactive, it's it's uh, it's going to be noticed because everybody's really upping their game. Um, Tanver, could I ask you from the the Databricks perspective, why why did your company or your organization decide that the proactive was a, a critical thing to pursue? Uh, absolutely. So as uh, Daniel mentioned, CSAT is potentially a lagging indicator, and and by the time you wait for CSAT that to be the deterministic factor as to understand what the customer experience was like, it, it's too late. The damage has been done. And and if you look at the ticket's life cycle and you implement, Im implement a mechanism where you can do real-time signal analysis, there is a lot more that can be done before the ticket starts going south. And there, there is a lot more you can do to salvage the situation and provide provide the best desired outcome for the customer by intervening, by intercepting at the right time. And, and, and essentially, that's what makes a proactive support a lot more important. And as Krishna mentioned, we are in a subscription-based, uh, usage-based economy, and mm -hmm. every minute lost is, is lost revenue for a customer. And you don't want to get to a point where CSAT is your only mechanism to determine what we can do best for this customer. You want to intervene, you want to intercept pretty earlier on before things start going south. And with added insight and intelligence, you want to get to a point where where you are able to do the right thing from get-go, as in assigning the ticket to the right support engineer, uh, analyzing what the prior experience has been, where they need the most help uh, if, if a ticket comes in. And, and and getting it getting it routed to the right resources. So pro proactive proactive support in customer success is is essentially taking the take, taking the front row now, and and it is it is becoming more and more important as we steer towards cloud based economy. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Well, let's get into some actual examples of what you're doing, and I want to start with this proactively identifying signals. Uh, from customers using sentiment analysis, artificial intelligence, 
natural language processing or NLP. Denver, let's uh, stick with you. Uh, Vanessa, if we could go to the next slide. Could you give us an overview of how you're using support logic and the business results that you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. So in my previous slide during the introduction, I kind of talked about how we are laid out and what are some of our drivers that we, we aspire to deliver on. And if we consider both and and, and we have to identify an approach on how to solve this at scale. We, we, we wanted to do a lot more intelligent sentiment analysis. So we went about building an in-house sentiment analysis mechanism, which essentially was what was suboptimal. It used to do, it used to render a lot of false positive and our, our, our leadership team, management team ended up spending a lot more cycles where, where they didn't need to. So we, we, we continue to explore options, which, which would give us uh, true positives and 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 it's ai based so we we continue to explore options which would combine the ticket metadata as well as the actual content which is which is customer customer messages customer comments updates in the ticket analyze them process them and 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 use an intelligent artificial intelligence based tool which will which will help us identify legitimate, legitimate customers' business impacting situation, urgent situation that we need to get ahead of and stay on top of. We also wanted to, 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 to get an outcome from this tool where we can get ahead of a situation which is going south and prevent customer, customer frustrations. Also something that would help identify trends as in are there, are there are there consistent tickets coming from last couple of days where they are having specific issues, which may be something that, that we broke within the product. So we want to quickly identify that and, and, and put together a solution or a plan to solve that quickly. And in, in addition to that, we're also looking for tools where since we are in a global economy, Databricks product being available globally and support centers being available globally, we want to align the tickets best to customer's time zone to make the, the customer availability and support engineers availability as effective as possible. And, and, and during our review and research, uh, support logic uh, uh, continued to come up as the best suited uh, tool uh, that, that, we, that, 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 we, that we found met majority of the things that we were looking for from, from a tool because it, it was essential to not just look at the ticket metadata information as an open date, closed date, updated date, but look at the actual content, uh, process it intelligently, and generate alerts and signals to intercept and intervene at the right time. So essentially, we ended up ended up standing up support logic, which was as simple as just uh, setting up a Salesforce connector, which started uh, which started streaming data into support logic and and, and processing these content real time and making alerts and signals available for us to proactively handle those situations. So that's that's the story of how we got how, how we approach that problem and 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 leverage support logic with all of its available functionalities to get ahead of our, our deliverables. Fantastic. Um, let's go to the next slide. And Daniel, I'd like to hear from you. What what has been your approach to introducing AI into customer experiencing monitoring and what business results have you seen at Click? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, we, uh, AI in my mind has to be introduced step by step. I mean, it's, you cannot go full AI uh, everywhere without some, uh, some basics and, you know, foundation. As uh, you know, our step one has definitely be with SuperLogic. Why? Because it was easy to install. It was easy to plug the tool into our own process, and it was a way to get some quick results and quick wins. So that that that's why uh, we we use SuperLogic now. You know, in terms of expanding AI, uh, you know, overall in our infrastructure, I think you you really need to have some some foundation basic in place. One especially in our SaaS offering to have a strong, uh, let's say, prescriptive journey that you can rely on and build on. That was one, and again, end-to-end -end from, you know, lending to renewal. Number two is having a, a very strong digital footprint as well, because, you know, to scale, that, that's what you can use and what AI can actually leverage. So 
you think about your knowledge base, you think about your webinars, you think about, uh, you know, your community. And then when you, you have that, then you can expand your, your AI footprint to, you know, a, a chatbot. You can, uh, you know, have AI tool in your own community. And again, on the back end with, uh, with what, uh, you know, you can do with Superlogic. So, you know, that's what we are building. We think that, uh, you know, by mid of 2021 will be there. So, you know, while you have to introduce AI, uh, you know, slowly, in fact, you can do it very quickly. Now, from a, uh, a very uh, basic, uh, let's say ROI for us, uh, you know, at Click, if you look at uh, March 2020, when we started to work with Superlogic and, and you look at uh, our evolution with, uh, with escalation, uh, I mean, this uh, has been pretty tremendous. I don't know, someone maybe moves the slides, so I'll, uh, I'll go back there. Um, you, you, you see that, uh, you know, in just six months of time, we actually decrease our escalation by more than 30%. So in 2021, we'll continue to expand uh, our partnership with Superlogic and, and we have two new modules that uh, we'll start using uh, beginning of January. One will be related to agents and how um, you know AI will help us uh, manage the efficiency and quality of services delivered uh, by agent and on the other end on the customer base is, is, is really expanding the use of Superlogy to customer success and our CSM will be able to look at uh, you know the, the accounts account by accounts or the portfolio of accounts and look at uh, you know or how, how their customers are doing from a sentiment and attention score um, standpoint so again uh, you know AI has been providing this personalized touch to our customers and the change uh, that we have been able to push to customers has been very, very, very quick. Wow, that, that's really impressive with the, the escalation decrease. I mean, that, that's a quality of life improvement for your employees as, as well as your, your customers. So that, you know, it wasn't the expected business result um, I thought I would see. So it's really interesting. So a follow-on question for Krishna. We've heard uh, some great uh, results from a couple of your customers. Uh, are these uh, pretty typical use cases for your customers? Do you see other uses for sentiment analysis within tech companies? Yeah, the, the uh, escalation reduction is definitely one of our top use cases, but uh, the way we have uh, structured the product is we have um, many modules, so you can start really simple with a simple use case. Uh, so it's such as you can start with analytics first, or you can go to real-time uh, signals and, and reduce uh, uh, the incoming escalations or also reduce, improve the CSAT, right? We can start something simple and then you can grow on to <clears throat> other use cases. Naturally, what we see is people, uh, once they see the value from this product, um, product team wants um, get access to the or to our product. Uh, and then engineering team wants access to the product and the customer success team wants to get access to the product and sales team. So it organically grows to other functions within the company. And that, that's because it's a testament to the kind of signals you can find in the in the body of the ticket. The signals that's there in the body of the ticket is useful pretty much to any function within the company. Um, and the, the challenge has been in the past is how do you extract the signals in a very simple, effective way and proactively notify the right people so that they are in the loop and they're not, you don't want to bring them into a conversation when it's too late. And often engineering and, and sales gets involved only when the case gets escalated and by the time it's too late, right? So there's a natural organic progression of how people see this value. So we see customers going beyond their initial use case and branching out into other functions within the company. Yeah, I think that's just a, a logical progression. Uh, we heard some great ROI stories from Click and Databricks. Are those pretty typical? Do you have any other ROI examples to share? Yes, um, we have uh, done a webinar in the past uh, with Nutanix and Aruba and they, but they, they have talked about their uh, uh, gains. So again, similar story, improvements in CSAT score and significant reduction in escalations. 
So this is pretty much consistently what we see across our customers. And I think that what really surprises most people is two things. The time to um, implement is extremely short and time to value is also extremely short. So you can instantly see results within months of deployment. Uh, I think that's what uh, uh, Click has shared with us on this slide. Uh, so yeah, we are very happy with uh, all the outcomes we are able to achieve with our customers. Yeah, I think it's, it's impressive um, that your customers are seeing results very quickly. It's not taking 12 months of implementation and a team of 20 data scientists to make it happen. They, they seem to be seeing you know, results in, in just a, a few weeks, which is impressive. So I always like to emphasize that you know, no transformation project is ever complete. There's always another phase. So I, I'd like to hear from our panelists if you have any additional phases uh, of this project uh, planned. And Hanver, I know that uh, Databricks is interested in leveraging support logic to better enable support and engineering to work together. Could you talk about that and any other plans on your roadmap? Definitely. So we, we've been using support logics, uh, functionalities, and module uh, to, to a great extent and have been seeing great results out of it. We have improved uh, customer satisfaction. We have improved partner customer satisfaction. We have we have uh, we, we have improved our SLA compliance measurements, and and to a certain extent, we all, although we don't have a direct way to measure it, but I think we have salvaged a lot of lot of uh, customers who were not happy about support and have won them and turned them into ongoing uh, on, ongoing revenue mechanism. So de definitely great outcome, and we want to. We want to continue to we want to continue to stay on this journey with support logic and some of the other use cases modules that we are we, we are looking into utilizing is intelligent ticket assignment which I have it on the slide as the first point is we, we want to explore uh, opportunities to align the most relevant skilled support engineers from get-go. And it, what we have seen is if you have the right support engineer handling the ticket, who has the strengths in the technology as well as customer communication, then that, that's that's majority of the win right there. And, and support logic has that module available for us to use. We have been test driving it and, and, and 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 our experience so far has been has been amazing. So based on the content of the ticket, and based on how support engineers have handled the technology in the past, putting together with their existing backlog and availability, creating a holistic view of which support engineer is best suited for this incoming ticket, is is what we really uh, we, we really ch cherish about uh, intelligent case assignment for support logic. So that dashboard is stack ranked, who is the best suitable than the next support engineer than the next. And and we we go about taking the recommendation and assigning or routing that ticket to to that that, that stack rank dashboard that we have in support logic. So we have been test driving that functionality. We're super pleased uh, with how it's been it's been helping us help helping us get ahead of of the ticket assignment from get go. That that's one aspect that we are using. The other aspect is uh, automated case handover. So we are looking to generate alerts and signals out of support logic where where there is misalignment of an ongoing ticket. So there, there, there is misalignment at the time of ticket creation. However, there could potentially be misalignment at the ticket at the time of ticket handling during the life cycle of the ticket. And if there is if there is a need to realign tickets, then there are signals that we potentially are looking to consume from support logic to to, to help us uh, match support assign support engineer assignment with the customer's availability. And there are also situations where you need continued assistance, right? Where a customer has a business impact position, and you want you want that ticket to roll over to the next support center for continued assistance. And we want to flag those situations proactively to our leadership team. We don't want situations where support engineer uh, misses that misses that customer's business impact and and and, and ends up. And, and ends up signing off for the day without that ticket getting handed over. So we want to get ahead of it. We want that on our leadership radar so that that ticket gets gets appropriately handed over to the next support center. So essentially, we are we, we are looking to 
consume those alerts from support logic and also get ahead of, of the whole continued assignment situation. In, in addition to that, uh, given the outcomes that we have seen from, from support perspective, our engineering team who, who lives in JIRA, engineering team uh, runs through JIRA, they have, their, they have their interaction, they have their transactions within the JIRA system. So we want to plug JIRA into support logic as well and start combining both support as well as JIRA insights to create a more holistic view of, of, of the customer as well as corresponding tickets. So those, those are some of the avenues we are exploring at this point. Intelligent case assignment is something that we are already trying and, and have seen effective results out of that. Well, it sounds like you're gonna have a pretty busy 2021. Uh, Daniel, you and I talked a couple of weeks ago, uh, you were interested in maybe extending the sentiment analysis into your core community. Um, what do you have on the roadmap for future projects? Yeah, um, good question. So yeah, while we are optimizing and, and, and again expanding our partnership with SuperLogic with our case management, I mean, the idea is to do less and less case management. So. What we are doing is while our, most of our users' journey start in Google today, our job is to funnel these requests into our community. And, and when they are in a community, is making sure that the interaction, the touch point in the community end up being successful, right? So what, what we are building is an interaction between uh, our community and our digital content. And when the digital content is actually not successful, is having our agent connecting with his users. And in order for us to do that, uh, we will use AI in the community to be able to look at all of this interaction and prioritize this interaction so that we know which one needs our attention first. And that's what we are doing. So. Uh, you know, we, we, we are doing it in partnership with uh, Coros and, you know, uh, Superlogic and, and, and both of them are going to help us go there. But again, the idea is the agent, uh, it doesn't stay in a reactive mode, is actually getting closer to this uh, digital, cont I mean, digital touch point, making sure that this touch point is actually successful. And when you... You think about that, and we were going to get there, and likely, you know, by, by mid of 2021, the idea is then that we, we use all of this infrastructure that we build into the product. And, you know, from within the product, you'll be able to have access to the community. You'll be able to post in the community. And finally, if this, again, this uh, uh, engagement or this touch point is not successful, you'll be able to make an appointment with uh, with an agent uh, from from support. So, you know, at the end of the day, you, you will never leave the, the, the product whether you need assistance or you're trying to get to your outcome. And that's where we want to be before end of 2021. Fantastic. Well, uh, we're getting near the end of our time together, but Krishna, I wanted to get in the last word uh, with you, if you have any final comments and want to tell our audience about your free trial offer. Yeah, I, I, one of the basic thing uh, we we foundationally think as a company is that you can have an amazing technology and the technology can produce amazing results. But if it's very difficult to implement and adopt, then the technology is not going to have an impact. Any successful technology in the industry, if you look at it not they don't, they don't become successful just because the technology is great. They become successful because it's accessible, very easy to implement. So this is something we have been focusing on uh, from the get go. Uh, so we have launched a very recently a free trial offer for anyone who can come to our website, and it's very easy to get a taste of our product. We can do a very uh, short uh, trial with our product. We also have a demo environment. You can actually log into a demo environment and see how our product looks, but you can even connect to your live instance and start seeing the value immediately. And we think it's, it's very important for, for the support industry specifically because uh, they have very limited time and they have very limited resources. So it's very important that technology adoption piece is as simple as possible. So that's what we, we are focusing on with this free trial. Fantastic. Well, uh, I appreciate your patience with all my questions and joining us for the panel today. And Vanessa, I'll hand it back to you. 
Great. Thank you so much, John. Um, unfortunately, we are out of time, but I want to, we had quite a few questions. I want to squeeze just one question in. And Lauren asks, both Click and Databricks are data analytics software companies. Why did you decide to partner with SupportLogic? So, Daniel, why don't you take that first? Why we choose to are not doing it uh, ourselves? I think that uh, it's going back to I think what uh, we've been said uh, we've been saying here is uh, is a quick return on investment. Is uh, I, I think it's AI for support is is uh, is a job that uh, you know we didn't want to do at uh, at Click. I think uh, as I said, uh, we have been able in six months to get an investment and a return on investment, and it's not something we would have been able to do with an uh, homegrown solution. So definitely that's a decision I've made, but looking at again the return on investment, uh, we, we would not have been able to, to do it with an homegrown solution. There's no way we can we could do it in six months. Okay. That's and right. then I guess Timber the go ahead. Yep, same question to you, please. Yeah, definitely. So for us, it, it was again uh, get, getting getting the most effective solution as quickly as possible. As the team continued to scale, we we saw more and more escalations come through due to lack of intelligence in the product. And although we are data database, AI based, machine learning based organization, the expertise on the support side to stand up a, a support specific intelligent product was still going to be a significant ramp up of building something in house in addition to managing the existing resources to do the ticket work right so we we our resources were positioned to to operate the support and not really focus on building a product so we were looking for a quick return on investment something that we could we, we could jump start and and start using from get go, which support logic enabled and empowered us to do. So, there, there were there were multiple factors went into that decision, and and effectively it was it was getting to the desired outcome as quickly as possible. Wonderful. Okay, folks. Well, we have come to the conclusion of today's live webinar. Don't worry. I know we still have a few questions out there. We will reach out to you personally and make sure we get a response to your question. Um, just a couple of quick reminders before we sign off for today. There will be an exit survey at the end of today's live webinar. Please take a few minutes to provide your feedback on the content and your experience by filling out that brief survey. And a link to the recorded version of today's webinar will be sent out within the next 24 hours. I'd now like to take this time to thank our presenters, John, Tanver, Daniel, and Krishna for delivering an outstanding session. And thank you to everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us for today's live webinar, How Databricks and Click Use Real-Time Signals to Improve Customer Satisfaction. Brought to you by Technology Services Industry Association and sponsored by SupportLogic. We look forward to seeing you at our next TSIA webinar. Take care, everyone.